What is going on, everybody? I'm Bit W Zan with a very mournful Ichiban nonsense podcast. Mournful, and I'll get into I'll get into that in a little bit here. But uh, let me introduce uh, people joining me today. You should know them by now. First off is a man who, in response to the Drake stream, will stream PUBG with Vanilla Ice Zentius <laughs> on the in- on the East Coast. And you gotta so, you gotta know where your audience wants. I know. Get that ice ice stream, guys. So I don't know if you the other you other guys have heard about it, like that stream that happened like last week or so, where Drake was on there with some streamer, I think it's called Ninja, and he was playing Fortnite with the kid, and it was like probably like the most popular, or, like the most watched uh, Twitch stream ever, ever. Yeah. And like Drake the rapper, I think he was on there with like uh, Travis Scott and all those guys and some other people too. But yeah, people went crazy for it. And they were all, like, watching. I don't think he was even on camera. He was just, like, on voice and stuff like that. Yeah. He did pretty all right, it too. It was pretty uh, <laughs> crazy, considering the, the numbers they were talking about. Like, I think they said the last biggest stream was 300,000 viewers. Yeah. And this was up to 600,000. Yeah, at its peak, I think it was, like, 607 or 6-something. Yeah. yeah, it was about, about 600,000 for sure. And that the guy, um, Ninja, got over, what was it, 90,000 subscribers Oh, yeah. I don't know how he coordinated that situation, but he definitely benefited from yeah. it. He got a ton of new viewers. I, I, like I said, I watched for a bit. Like, I wasn't going to stay on forever, but I was watching for a bit. And I was like, oh, okay. That's pretty interesting. Because a ton of people on Twitter was like, uh, they were like going nuts about it and stuff. So I decided to check it in. I'd imagine uh, check like out. The, that um, the chat was bonkers then. Yeah. It was unreadable. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's introduce the next folks in here. Next person is... Is a woman who has a, who sleeps so deep that not even Prince Charming can wake her up. <laughs> Secret kitty. Those don't exist anyway. Secret. Hello. Hello. Are you sleeping again? Oh, <laughs> and lastly, let's have a moment of silence for a man mm. whose reviewing career ended after one year. <laughs> You're Minister <right>. E. <laughs> What's going on for Moment of silence, yeah, moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> From 2017 to 2018, Ew. the minister had a, a you know, a, 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 like, how you call it? What's that, what's that word I'm looking for? It was a growing reviewing career. But then uh, he put it all on the wrong horse and blew it all. <laughs> and now that career is over. Oh, it's still budding. It's still budding. And it will never die. I will pump <laughs> life back into it. <laughs> okay. So, actually, let's start with Mez, then. Mez, yeah. let's start with the weeks, buddy. What did you got going on? Actually, I, I saw a lot of stuff this week. Like, I was, like, watching a bunch of stuff on Netflix. I was, like, going on a okay. binge spree. And um, I finished up Jessica Jones. Nice. And I would say that, that show finishes up a lot better than it started for me. So, yes, I like I finished it too, and I can agree on yeah. that. Yeah, so like it started kind of slow, but the finish was really good. Um, mm-hmm. I saw another movie called The Good Neighbor. I don't know if you guys heard of it. I've heard of it. It's is that like about Allstate or something? No, it's actually like the whole thing's about this these two kids who decide to prank this old man who lives next door mm-hmm. and. The whole thing ends up with the guy dying. So, like, they're, like, the whole movie is going through, like, the events that are happening and what, like, what uh, led up to the guy um, eventually dying. So. Oh. Like, it's actually pretty interesting. A pretty good movie. Yeah. And I think, I forgot his name. Is it James Caan is his name? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Is, He's in it. Was it a Netflix movie or is it a movie movie? It's a Netflix movie, I think. Oh. But it's pretty good. Um, I saw uh, The Cloverfield Paradox. Oh, okay. What'd you think about that one, then? Uh, I actually kind of enjoyed it for what it was. Like, the whole, like, space sci-fi. Like, I understand what you guys are talking about, how, like, they kind of try to fit too much into it. Yeah. But, like, the actual, like, sci-fi elements of it, seem pretty good it just they tried yeah. to do too much for it 
they try to squeeze in that Cloverfield thing. Yeah. It was like, maybe it wasn't necessary. Yeah. And um, the another movie I saw was the Fumara Aukis m- movie, the live action one. Oh, yeah. Oh, have so it did come out. Haven't you guys seen that one? Or have no. any interest in watching it? I yeah. took a look at no. some of the clips and I was like, yeah, I don't like how it looks. <laughs> Like that's that was actually one of the movies I found funny. I was talking to one of my coworkers because I was saying it's like of all the these like uh, anime movies that they have adapted into like American movies with uh, white actors. I'm like this is probably the one anime they could have used white actors because the majority <laughs> of the people in there are German, like yeah um, Edward and Alphonse. Alphonse. Yeah, like all of those are. So it like, just kind of looked weird. Yeah, it's like they're they're all German, but then they ended up using like Japanese actors with like blonde hair, so it looked yeah. kind of weird. But yeah, I would say like completely weird. <laughs> the way they did not this, if you're going through Harajuku, yeah. Japan, it's not weird. There's a ton <laughs> of people wearing blonde wigs there. But the way they like went through the story though, if you are a fan of like the anime or the the manga, it's very true to the story, and I feel like they covered it really well. Like, they covered mm. a lot of the main um, story points that, like, a lot of the points fans will remember really well within that, like, I think it was, like, two-hour movie. Yeah. And mm. I was, like, actually, I actually enjoyed it a lot. So, that that's, if you liked Fumano Alchemist, I highly recommend watching that one. Huh. Um, nah, like, I was, I, I was only really, like, a, a, a level, like, a surface level fan of Fumano Alchemist. Like, yeah. I've seen bits and pieces of episodes. I know when they were on Adult Swim, I used to watch it uh, uh, most of the time, but I wasn't, I wasn't like, I didn't really got into it where I like, I knew any of the arcs. I can't even tell you like any arcs that, that happened. I think the only one that I, I actually like followed it for most of it was the, when they had the seven sins on there or like most of the seven sins when they had like gluttony and yeah. envy. Like and they, have, people, they have that that's part. That's about it. Like they have those people in there too. Okay. That's about the only one that yeah. I can, the arc that I can tell you for sure. Cause uh, I think I've seen like a run of those episodes. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's what it is, because it's just, like, the beginning arc. Mm. And, like, the the way that we made um, Al look in the armor, like, it looks really good, like, the whole living armor thing. Yeah. So that looks pretty cool. I'll, and So, yeah, like, if anyone's a fan of that, I would highly recommend watching that movie. And uh, another show, I'll start, another anime I watched was um, Devilman Crybaby. <laughs> what? Okay. I don't know if anyone's I've heard, heard of I've heard about this. that one. I've heard of it. It is. I haven't watched it yet. A bizarre anime. Yep. It, it, it actually it piques spoof? my interest. What was that? Devil Katie? Man Cry Baby. Is yeah. it a spoof on Devil May Cry? Like no, it's not. It's it's oh. actually like Devil Man is actually I think an older franchise, and this is like a reboot oh. of it. But oh, okay. it's pretty out there. Like I'd say, it's, it's definitely a mature anime because there's tons of gore and. <laughs> nudity and sex and all of that stuff in it but like the stuff they do and it's like it doesn't follow the conventional arc of any story and that's like that's what any story or any anime story of any story what <laughs> oh this shit because i've heard a lot of podcasters talk about this before like other part of the, the super best friends always talk about this every week and i'm just like man should i watch this show like because it sounds nuts because like <laughs> You like for me like I've I've watched a lot of anime I've watched a lot of like cartoons and comics and all this stuff so like typically like the way stories go you can yeah. kind of guess what the arc's gonna be for the hero and the villain and all of that but watching this I was like I couldn't predict what was gonna be next <laughs> so like that 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 kind of stuff like it, it interests me to like continue watching it um, so yeah that's that's another one I kind of recommend to watch if you guys. Need something to watch. Um, and I think that that's about it for my week. So the only thing else I was going to add is um, some more <clears throat> updates on Monster Hunter. So, like, I don't know if you guys saw it, but um, they have, like, a new spring update coming out in, like, April. And it's going to have, like, a whole, like, cherry blossom festival thing going on. Oh, okay. So, like, that looks pretty cool. And, like, another cool thing they're doing is, um, I don't know if you guys saw it, but they're adding a community-created weapon to the game. So, like, they had, fan like, a fan contest to someone, like, create a weapon, and they're adding that in. And, like, I thought that's yeah. pretty cool, like, to kind of involve your community into the game as well and make them feel more involved yeah. into it. That is cool. So, like, that is pretty cool, yeah. It's like Capcom actually doing something right for a change, you know? 
<laughs> it's strange. <laughs> strange, like, you know, a uh, freaking thing for Capcom to like, start involving the community and yeah. maybe caring what they think. Yeah, and like... Because they actually realize they, they lost that, uh, what is it, that arrogance. Yeah. Realize it will affect sales if you don't listen to your audience. It's like, and like, going back to things too, like, freaking uh, last week we was talking about crossovers... And like a couple days after we recorded it, oh, they announced yeah. the Devil May Cry <laughs> Monster Hunter crossover. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. Nostradamus <laughs> over here. <laughs> in the future. <laughs> it's like, apparently these companies are listening to us even before the podcast. Some way, out. yeah, I know. <laughs> they was like, wait a minute. Some kid just said this crossover. Release it now. <laughs> <laughs> before he takes credit for it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, oh. um, yeah, that's about it. That's all I had. Okay, then. Uh, secret, why don't you right. uh, lead us up with the, what you got for your week? Um, so, you remember how I told you guys last week about how, like, there it was guys that were, like, saying, oh, you have a nice voice or whatever? <laughs> well, it happened with a girl, too. It was oh, an yeah. older lady. We and went over this she was. I know, but I just <laughs> want to put it on record. That's why. Okay, it has to be put out as well. Um, and it wasn't like an older lady, and she was nice, and she's like, "You're so pleasant to talk with," and I was like, "Thank you." Mm-hmm. She okay. trying to get in there. She, she, no, okay. <laughs> she, she asked yeah. for your phone number. <laughs> you seem no. like such a nice girl. Anyways, have you so ever been gone I... by an old lady before? Oh my god! Oh, god. Oh, oh my god! Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, <laughs> I hate you guys. But anyways, so all right, and then I, I did start watching Jessica Jones, but like literally only the first thirty minutes because then I had to go. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. we'll talk about it once I finish watching it. I guess I want to have a spoiler. Quite the social maybe. life, Kitty's been not <laughs> not really. And then what else? Oh, remember the movie The Foreigner with Jackie Chan? I watched that last week, and yeah, there's not enough Jackie Chan in that movie for me to have watched it. Like the commercials made it seem like he was gonna be like the super badass, and he was. But there was not enough of him. It was mostly uh, with that that old the other old guy. Uh, Pierce Bronson. I don't know his James yeah. Bond. Mm, sure, why not? <laughs> I don't know. You know, what? I don't know the actor's name. Like, uh, that's that was, that's the not his actor's, actor's name. name. That's the character's name, James Bond. Oh. I know, but I'm like, I've never watched a lot of James Bond movies. I, don't, I never, never watched any James Bond movie. Like, I still know who that is. <laughs> I know who James Bond is, but I don't know who the the actors that played him. Anyways. Okay. Anyways, there's some old guy. He's pretty pretty popular in movies, too, though. But it was mostly about him and his family, and I was like, "Ah, this sucks. Where's Jackie Chan? That that sucks. That interests me in the part of the movie where I thought it was going to be like, Mm -hmm. yeah, like Jackie Chan playing this kind of like different role and stuff like that and going into like you know, uh, the battle between those two guys, it sucks to hear that. Yeah. Like, it's not, like, you know, he's not involved in it a lot of the times and stuff. That would suck. They really... Like, he, he's definitely in it, and there's definitely yeah. some cool parts, but, like, I want expected more of him. Yeah, they really Especially advertised he was it, like, like, really heavy. Yeah. <clears throat> he was the advertised, like, he, like um, actor for this movie, too. Yeah, I know. <sighs> I was kind of sad about it, but I still What do you think about it. the movie, though, overall? Um, it was pretty good. It's like a, how would it, what kind of genre would it be? Um, he does terrorize that yeah. guy. Like, <laughs> the guy's like, doesn't even know what to do anymore, kind of. Action thriller. Um, yeah, action thriller, I guess, would be it. Because there's like explosions, there's fight scenes, and those are pretty cool. So yeah, I guess action thriller. But it's not like full of action, like other action movies. <laughs> I couldn't think Jack of one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But it was pretty cool. And then I don't, I think we talked about it. Bef- Somebody else was watching Blade. But I watched Blade 2 the same day I watched The Foreigner. And, man, like 90s action movies, 
they don't they don't age well. Like it's so corny now. Like like I remember what? they like throw him his glasses. Yeah. Like the old guy, and I was like, yes. wow, that was that so was cool. Corny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so corny, and I was like, yes, I can't believe yes. we thought this was cool. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It that was, was and that's. I still think that, that was cool. I think it's cool. What are you oh talking about? That stuff was all dwarfed by the excellent action scene and the excellent final battle. Yeah, yeah. remember, he's a vampire, so he has like extra reflexes. Okay, so the guy could throw the glasses anywhere. He'd be like, "Ha!" and catch it. Okay, but, you have to remember that. Uh, so take that into consideration when you no. factor in the fact that he has vampire blood. Okay, and that the Can't cool just... music starts when the glasses are <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh the glasses give him a, a plus 10 buff on his abilities as well. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> but, yeah, it was pretty good. I was like, I miss these movies. No, no. <clears throat> I think you're wrong on this one. We, we will that's... defend this one to the end right here. Yeah. yeah. No, it, that, did, that part did not age well, okay? And then cool. he gets thrown in this pool of... Blood, I yes. assume it's blood. I yes, missed that part. And I was like, blood. who, if they're producing this, why do they just have it in the open? Like, if you think of a factory, right, in production standards, mm -hmm. like, things are usually covered because they but don't want to be contaminated factory. Yes, with, like, bacteria and stuff. But it's blood. So. But it's just, just, <laughs> okay, why is this blood just, like, in the open? Why doesn't it have a lid on it? <laughs> It's a vampire factory. It's, it's not like the vampires are getting inspected by Why OSHA or anything so like that. Cute. They don't care about like, <laughs> say, uh, like safety hazards or anything. <laughs> and I'm, this is what, Blade 2 you're talking about? But I'm production saying? standards, they should have a standard, okay? No, they're just yeah. pumping out human blood. Okay? Yeah, it was Blade 2. Yeah, that's Guillermo del Toro, okay? So that guy is a genius. He knows what he's doing. You're hitting that Zan's heart right now. One of his all favorite movies. He's going to defend it to the utmost. <laughs> okay, but I still like it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have its ageness in it. Or its, <laughs> and, you know, and... blood factory production flaws like anyways <laughs> <laughs> um, that's your critique okay. on the movie the glasses <laughs> scene and the fact that there's no lid so, on the right, blood my last thing is i mean it's still a pretty good movie like and then oh what's his name is in it um i don't know that actor's hmm. name daryl from the walking dead he's so young in there so young oh yeah oh yeah and technically, that movie came out in 2002, so it's not a 90s movie. Oh, well, it still has that 90s feel, because it was early 2000s. Wow, so he's been working with Game of the, the Toro for a while, then. Yeah. Who? That guy. Um, the hell's his name? But, yeah, the Daryl guy, because he, he was doing the, the game. He was uh, doing kind of do Silent Hills with Game of the Toro 2 and Hideo Kojima. Now he's doing Death Stranding. Yep. What's his name? Oh, Norman Reedus. Yeah. Oh, okay. What was the last thing you were going to talk about, Kitty? You said you had one more thing. Yeah. The last thing was um, I the trailer for Fantastic Beasts. And I, it's just called Fantastic Beasts now, I guess, the, the series. But uh, what was it called? Crimes of Grindelwald. <sighs> it's going to come out. And I watched the trailer and I'm so excited because, you know, I love Harry Potter. And it takes place in the universe, but it is not. Uh, like, it doesn't have to do with Harry Potter. It's, like, the backstory to, like, what happened with, like, Voldemort. I think it's going to have to do with Voldemort, too. Mm. But other, like, like evil wizards as well. Like, Grindelwald, I'm pretty sure he was evil or he was framed. I don't remember. It's been a while since I read the books, but I'm pretty excited about that. Did you guys watch it at all? I didn't, no. I didn't watch it, but I heard, like, fans, like, talking about it. And apparently, I saw like people happy that they saw like Hogwarts in the trailer. Then I saw like other fans complaining. It was like apparently you can't like um, apparate oh. into Hogwarts, and there's like a part in the trailer where he did that or something. Yeah, that makes sense. I and think... like all the fans were like going up in arms about it. It's like, oh, you're not supposed to like teleport into the grounds or whatever. 
that's probably true. Like, I think because it's before, it's pre-Voldemort, so I think, I thought about that too, and I think it's because, like, um, like, they didn't have so strict security measures before, you know, like, does that make sense? And then Voldemort came along and everybody's like, oh shit, up to security. I think that's what it is. Good explanation. <laughs> I think, I'm not sure though. So, okay, I didn't watch that trailer, but uh, one trailer that I did watch uh, was the Avengers trailer for oh, yeah. Infinity War, which is, the, they said, their final trailer. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, I know Mez <laughs> was so <clears throat> graciously enough to put it in the, in the group chat, and I'm sure everybody watched it, you know, since he <laughs> put it a long time ago and everything, so... Let's let's hear everybody's yeah, opinion of this of the yeah. trailer. Let's start with Kitty. Kitty, yeah, we all what did you think of the Avengers trailer? Uh, I think it was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's some interesting parts. Um, lots, a lot's gonna uh, a lot's yeah. gonna happen yeah, was, in that yeah. movie. Did you um, think it was weird that Thanos had that that Thanos had That's that my... sequence in there? That was pretty weird to add in the trailer, right? <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> it was really I still think Superman he's pretty too. pink, so. <laughs> Crazy. I know, right? He just came in. I was like, whoa, I didn't even know they were doing a crossover. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but okay, for the rest of us who actually did watch it. Right? <laughs> 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 What'd you guys think about it? I'll say this. Seeing uh, the last portion with Spider-Man doing his thing, dodging everything coming his way, when mm-hmm. Armageddon is coming down on top of him. That is the way Spider-Man's supposed to be. I already liked it. Just that little piece alone. Yeah. Everything else was great. I was like, so Spider-Man's actually going to be Spider-Man in this movie. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I thought like that, like the, I you think... see like the action, the seriousness, and then the, you could see some of like the comedy stuff they still had thrown in there with Star-Lord oh, yeah. throwing like his little jokes or... Tony yeah, Stark. his banter between him and Tony Stark yeah. is going to be pretty good. Or like with um, Peter yep. and Doctor Strange at the end. Oh yeah, yeah like that's if you can see like the aesthetic comedy thrown in there, but a lot of action, like a lot of the stuff. I don't know if you read like the most recent yeah. um, Infinity Run with Thanos, but that like the black the Black Cabal in there, and like all those guys look really good. It's like all his like henchmen and stuff. I wonder yeah, if they, they've, uh, they include them they've in the put movie. A, they've put a lot of work into this movie because what? how long has the production been? Like over a year or something? Like two years, I think. They started, I think they started filming in 2016. Yeah, so the heart and soul is going Dang. into this, so that's much appreciated yeah. for sure. Yeah, I like the whole thing. Like they kind of, they kind of like took elements of different stories of, like in, of Donald's and like Infinity because they had the whole, he wants to like wipe out the whole universe in the snap of a finger, which is from Infinity Gauntlet. Dad, the yeah. part from Infinity I was talking about with his like his henchmen, and like they're com- combining like different storylines to make up this one, and that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. That's pretty smart to do, yeah. Because you're like you're not you're not gonna get to do this again in a couple years, so it's like might as well just jam it with everything they got now. And like I know, like the Twitterverse was uh was in disarray because of the couple lines it's like there's the one scene where he's like i hope they remember you where people are just like oh no it's like is this the end of like tony stark or whatever and then like the uh the last part too where uh like cap is like holding off yeah. the, the glove of thanos and stuff and he's just screaming for life yeah, people are just like oh no like because they, they know somebody's got to go and they see yeah. in these scenes they're just like oh no Even this is have- it <laughs> well if if it's if it's a true to war uh infinity gauntlet uh Thanos is supposed to body yeah. quite a few people. They even oh, had that. Yes. <laughs> the fact that they put the one. emphasis <laughs> so much on like, like, oh, the half of the universe is going to be gone and then it came back to it again was like, oh, there'll be balance. I think they're going to plan off to kill off like half of the, that cast. Yes. I see that very oh, possible. Wow. And the, sec- and the second trailer Peter. with uh, them showing that last little hoorah and seeing War Machine, not yeah. Iron Man and not seeing Spider-Man and a couple other people, I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> are they murked already? This looks like a last, last, uh, last yeah, draw. Last stand or something. I think they announced that like the last third of the movie is gonna take place in Wakanda. So like the last Makes third sense. of the movie is gonna be like that whole hmm. like battle scene in Wakanda. The 
best defense. I think that they're, they're uh, and honestly, it would make sense too, because like I, I know that they're happy that Black Panther did as well as it did, because like, yeah, if if like let's say you know uh, Black Panther becomes kind of the leader of the group now, and like you know Tony and all those other guys can like pass the baton to this new set of heroes, and the, the, the MCU will be okay. They're like, okay, thank God, we have our leading guy now. Like you know. Yeah. Like black, we we have an yeah. Iron Man for the Phase Four part of the MCU or wherever they want to go in the future, so mm-hmm. like yeah, having it in Wakanda kind of sets that up pretty well. But I also like think like I wonder if they show in like because they show Thor right, they show Iron Man struggling, they show Cap struggling. I'm like, you know, these are all the old heads from the MCU. I was like, I want, I kind of like, there's a part of me that's like, you know, is this a red herring where they're just like. <clears throat> oh, all these guys are gonna die, but not really. And like, it's gonna be somebody else that you didn't even think about. Like, you know, they've you know, done that before. Yeah, it's like they're, they're showing you all this stuff, and it's like kind of too on the point that like these are the guys that are gonna yeah. die, right? Like they're showing like, oh, get ready, and then like when you watch the movie, it's like, oh wait, he survived that scene, and it was somebody else that died or something like that. And that's like, a possibility oh, as well. That that's all I Marvel. So. Marvel yeah. would do some crap like that too. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too because like people like then you know people like love those characters especially like the moviegoers like they're like like they don't want to kill off their popular people then they're like gonna, not going to kill yeah. see the movie yeah. you know what i mean they, they can always do what they that's, did in the comics that's what I think. it was like oh all these people died but then someone else got their infinity gauntlet <laughs> now they're all back to life again and they're back to life that's a cop out that would be worse <laughs> yeah. than just killing off the the characters absolutely <clears throat> As much as, like, I love Cap and, you know, those guys, like I said, I think they've set up their their next phase, like, their next era of superheroes pretty well, you know? So, like, if they lost Cap and Iron Man and all those guys like that, you know, they'll have Black Panther, they'll have Spider-Man, they'll have Doctor Strange, and they'll have um, Captain Marvel when she does come along, like, leading yeah. the next era forward. So they won't be... Like, oh, man, we, we need that headliner. Because, like I said, I think Black Panther is going to be that, that new headlining guy for them going forward. Or Spider-Man, one or the other. I mean, he might be a little bit too young. So Black Panther might make, make more sense. And he's, like, the one that's, like, you know, made the most money out of these guys as yeah. well. So I kind of, like, when, after I watched this, I saw, like, one of my friends posted, it was, like, um, one of the comic uh, arts from Infinity Gauntlet. And I kind of wish they put this into the film, like especially during that scene when Cap mm-hmm. is facing down Thanos. It's like to have it in the book yeah. when he's facing him down. And it's like as long as there's one man against you, you will never mm-hmm. win or something like that. Yeah, and, like Thanos basically says like, like good words for like a guy about to die or some shit like that. It's like I really hope they throw yeah. that scene into there because that's like a really big scene from well. the. Not that whole that line maybe, but not that scene because then he just backhands Cap and that's how he killed him. It's kind of like <laughs> well, yeah, a very that line. Like it wasn't even a fight; it was just kind of like he backslapped the hell out broke of him and neck. Cap broke his neck. And I was kind of like, God damn, like that was a bitch way to well, die. Like, there. Well, like right, right before the scene that they showed in that trailer, when you saw like Cap struggling and yeah. they throw like that that homage yeah. back to the comic, that would be really cool. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, but yeah, all right, so. Transitioning from a great superhero movie to, uh, let's say, another superhero <laughs> movie that I watched. I just watched Justice League for the first time. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. This was on, like, hey, when, I, when, when Kitty said she liked it, I understood that. That was fine. Now, when Minister said he liked it, <laughs> that is what? where, like, it piqued my interest. Because I was like, hmm, I had heard some other stuff about this movie, but Minister liking it. And I held him at his word. And I told him, if you vouch for this movie, he's vouched for this movie. So I, uh, I sat and down I and I watched it for the first time. And a uh, minister, I'm going to have to like take your reviewing credentials away from you, man. That's this movie was terrible. <laughs> Wait, this movie on. was terrible. How was it terrible? All right. You know what? I will say this. All right. You know Go what? Go ahead. Break I'll it say down this. for me. I'll say I want to hear this. I want to hear this. I'll say this. It, it's, it wasn't terrible. Like, I, I can't sit here and say, like, oh, Mess, did you see this movie? I, did, I don't yeah, want to spoil it. anything. Okay, okay. I don't want to say, like, oh, this movie was the worst okay. <clears throat> superhero movie ever because there's been far worse than this movie. But I can't say it was great. I can't even say it was a good movie, to be honest. It was just really? kind of – it was a movie. It was just a movie. Like, nothing that happened had any substance of it or any value to it. It was just happening for the sake of happening in this movie. That's it. Are you it serious? Was, yeah, it was – You okay. did not – 
It was not. What you do, mean? So you tell me you sat through this movie and did not enjoy this movie. No, I didn't. It was just a movie. It was like, okay, I'm getting through this scene to get to the next one and then get to the next one and get to the next one. The comedy wow. was mediocre. Flash was terrible at comedy. Like he was not, wow. I laughed, I laughed zero times, <laughs> zero times, zero times throughout the whole, my, you know what? I, I, I'll take that back. There was one part that I laughed at and it was between Superman and Cyborg. That's it. <clears throat> but I'll get All to right, that. So I'll get to we, that. Look, we're, we're, I'm going to break it down. Go like, I'm going to say territory yeah spoiler territory for we're, sure we're going to the spoiler territory we've, we've all seen it it's on down. it's on dvd it's out on blu-ray so it's been out for a yeah. while so I, I, I think we're safe enough to talk about it spoiler but alert. we are going to spoil it here so i'm going to break it down i'm going to say the good stuff about this movie the stuff that i did like about it okay I'm so the, stuff that I did, <laughs> the action was the action was okay action was okay i'm not gonna be like oh it was terrible but it was okay it wasn't anything outstanding um cyborg was surprisingly interesting to be honest like Okay, I agree uh, with you there. He too. was to me. He's always been like the worst person. I was like, oh, Cyborg is trash, or whatever. But in this movie, yes. like, he was what? actually interesting, and like the idea that there could be a movie with him, where it's like this whole Frankenstein like aspect of him, or whatever, really interested me. But the fact that they like really just like boiled it down to like a couple of scenes was like, all right, there. This is just we need to squeeze him in here. So here's that. Uh, Superman, I I liked the way they did Superman in this movie. I really? feel like okay. they, 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 yeah, I really like the way they did yep. it because, like, he, yep. he was made into a big deal and, like, they brought he him seemed back more properly. like Superman. Yeah. He seemed more yeah, like he, Superman than anything he's else. more powerful than the whole team combined. <laughs> yeah. And, like, the way he, because the other ones, he was so, so brooding a lot of the times, but here he was kind of just, like, really carefree and, like, like, yeah, it's it was, this it was, easy it, for me. It yeah, was it's a, this yeah, easy for me to yeah. pass. Like, it was this aura it about him, like, the way he was in the world now, how he related to the world. It was kind of just like, yeah, that's how Superman would. What kind of act, you know? And like I said, the scene at the end between him and Cyborg, where he, like Cyborg was like, "Oh, I was like, I can't feel my toes, or I can't wiggle my oh, toes, and stuff like my that." Toes and hurt. Like, How do my yeah, my toes, toes hurt. How do I, my toes even hurt? And Superman's laughing because, and like I found that funny because it's just like this scene where these two super powered, like essentially like you know, like just super powered heroes are, are talking about feeling pain. Yeah, and they're just yeah. la and Superman and laughing it off. I thought that was really good. Okay. Um, Wonder Woman leading the team made sense, and I like like having her try to step up to lead the team, and kind of like be like the superhero beacon now. I like that too. That made sense, and I enjoyed that. Okay. Everything else was forgettable, and you know, like like I said, the comedy like Flash was such a tryhard at being funny. Like it wasn't nothing. Like he he wasn't good at being the awkward kid. It didn't. He was like, oh, like I can't believe this is happening. Like what what's, oh my God, Superman is here. Like. Guys could, Dude, you not nothing he did was funny. Like oh, like trying to give a pound to uh, Cyborg. He was like, oh yeah, no, well sorry, racial uh, overtones there. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? Like what are you, like it, nothing he did was Wait, funny at so, all. It tried. I, I felt it's forced comedy. The opposite. He was the I think force. he was supposed to be awkward, and he actually pulled that off. He's no, he didn't. Dude. He he was somebody who read about being awkward and was like, how do I, like let me watch a TV show or watch, or read a book on how people are awkward and mimic that. That's all he did, and it was not funny at all it didn't come across like genuine or it didn't come across authentic at all i, I didn't believe it at all when he, when he was trying to be like uh, uh awkward or whatever it was just like like yeah like a, a really popular kid who has to like study how to be awkward and that's what it seemed like but like awkward bro so awkward bro was also there. We're fully so the ends, like, right there you know no one see like if someone's really awkward in a show or tv or, like even in person you don't laugh at it, you mm -hmm. cringe. And I never cringed throughout that movie, yeah. so... You don't... It, no. You never got that awkward feel from him. Yeah. There was no... Like, Michael Scott. When you watch Michael Scott comedy, like, or Steve Carell playing Michael Scott at The Office, that was, like, awkward. Because he was like, oh, like, why would you say that? Like, it was never like that for The Flash. It was just kind of like, oh, okay. He, that's supposed to be, like, a funny scene there, and it wasn't. Like, okay. Like, you know. Wait, he he read right, the right. script. Hang on, hang on. Oh, hang on. Maybe, maybe, our, maybe our sense of humors are really different. So let me ask a question. Yeah. When Superman came back, we already talked about spoilers. Superman came back. Mm -hmm. Came oh, down. On. Everybody knew that was happening. <laughs> we all knew that was going to happen they, anyway. Uh, you know, <laughs> flat. F yeah. 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 F Flash is like, okay, pet no, cemetery. No, and the no. battle starts. Nope. That wasn't funny. I know what you're talking about already. It and, wasn't funny. And Flash is running. Nope. And his speed force feeling confident. And you see his face. He's confident. Nope. He said, I'm going to get behind this dude. And no. I'm fuck him up. And that was a good scene for sudden, Superman. And all of a sudden, he sees Superman's eyes yes. following him with a mean ass face. And what does he and do? Then the look of surprise. He does a Mr. Grill. Bean face. He does a Mr. Bean face. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's not funny, man. That was, was not wrong? funny. That was not funny. No. It, it was Come a great on. scene for Superman. Superman looked badass when he looked to the side. Like, 
And he was like, Zay, he was like Zay, I see you your might ass. just be the you might I just be the harshest ass. critic out there, man. No, you man. Just I'm not because I, and honestly, more people are in agreement with me than with you. So I'm sorry. You're you're like a, a like a, how you call it like a review of this movie, the judgment of this movie is not in skew with what the rest of the people saw. Because that scene, the only thing I got from that scene was like Superman's a badass. Because like he turned to the side and he was like, Yeah, I see you, punk. But like Flash's Mr. Bean face was not funny. Like. Ooh, he's me. Like, no, man, get out of here with that nonsense. <laughs> so, get out of here. To, so to go into this, we're going to have to talk about the DC bias. The DC bias is there. And people were saying this movie was bad from the, the, the get-go, from the jump. Including me. I was like, oh, man, I thought, I thought this movie was going to be terrible. This, after mm-hmm. seeing the movie, people were still bashing it, but just bashing it to bash it. No. So you're telling me, you're telling me the, the reaction, the... the, the the scenes between uh, the dialogue between Batman and Wonder Woman were terrible. The dialogue You're between me those. Batman and Wonder Woman was forgettable. It was neither it was neither it was neither good nor bad. It's forgettable. I don't even know anything they ever said. Like Batman was good, Ben Affleck was good, Wonder Woman was good in their respective roles. It honestly felt like like uh, a lot of them were just phoning it in. Bat like, but um, Batman was still good. Like Ben Affleck was really good in it, but like it was forgettable dialogue. Like. And, and the whole scene, like this whole thing, s- where like, and this whole thing, where like, he, he, they care about Superman now, like, oh, like since he's gone, the world is in disarray and all stuff like that. I'm like, where did this come from? All of a sudden, like, no, and 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 it's weird because they, they didn't care. They, they, they say because... like, they didn't care about him as like a person. They cared about like what, how he affected no, Batman, the world. Here's the thing, Batman. You see, you know, Batman versus Superman. He realized that hey, mm-hmm. the guy was actually a good dude. He was actually trying to do good, and I actually try to kill him I, get, I got the instrument to kill this man and if, you know essentially was responsible for killing someone that was solely good so he accepted that responsibility that's where that's coming from that's understandable batman realized okay i fucked up you know that was hypocritical of me to attack this dude just because he was different and you know so that's understandable the dialogue mm-hmm. between him and wonder woman actually showed a little bit of vulnerability to batman batman doesn't consider himself human like, hey, this guy got a family, you know, he got a family, he got a job. He's more yeah. human than me. Yeah, like, that's the that, only scene that's that that's the only, that that's the only scene that stood out. Development. The as only scene that stood out. That's fine. That's as the you only mentioned, scene that stood out. But there cyborg, was character nothing development. Nothing else. <laughs> nothing. Character development. There was no that was character introduction. There was no development yeah. from him. It was just the first movie he was in. <laughs> like, they could have made him anything he wanted to, and it would have been character development, in quotations. That was a character introduction. <laughs> The one no, scene he was between bro- he was brooding in the front in, in the beginning of the film. At the at the end, he started kind of accepting, "Hey, well, you know, I, yes, I, because I lost my ju- I lost my junk, but I do have these new abilities where I could, you know, tap into it." Yeah, because the script the script demanded that he got to that point because they needed him for the ending of the movie. Like it wasn't they couldn't have him brooding for more than a half an hour because then he wouldn't be a part of the ending. Like, if they actually gave him his own movie, maybe they could have actually developed the character much more than they did. It was a rushed development, and it was not... But they did it right, though. They did it right. It wasn't done right. The fact that it was done in one movie, they did it right. It's like, this is the the, the best way they could do it. no. I think... Mm -hmm. I and think they, they, they like, so and they were all developed the same way. described it, like, with the cyborgs, like, he was more of a plot device than a character. Yeah, I could see that. And they were all developed the same way. Like each each character was going through the same development. So of course they were as easy. They just copy and pasted. Like Aqua Bro, ah, I do things by myself. Actually, no, Aquaman. Aquaman actually, was I'm, like a, the I'm, weak. A, I'm part of, I like being part of the team. Blah blah. And then Aquaman like the Flash. Is the weakest part I don't want, of the I'm, movie. I'm used by myself. Because like, Aquaman's I need friends. character in general is garbage. That's why I realized that he had like the least amount of scenes. You can't really go anything on Aquaman. What is he? Talks a fish underwater garbage that's why they kind of strayed away from that i can understand that aquaman's always been trash <laughs> so there, yeah there, there is no there is no step down from well, aquaman. I like, I can't <laughs> like anything, say that. anything you do with aquaman is going to be even, a like, step agree up with you there, so, e, because I'm not gonna talk we talked about to that. a lot of dc fans aquaman had the best comic run of recent years with the new dc runs like he's had the best comics and best stories so a lot of people aquaman actually enjoy trash. aquaman stories it's like, oh, who's ca- which character am I going to pick first? Aquaman. Hell no. Never the I'm, time. And I'm pretty what sure people would have enjoyed their own Aquaman movie before getting to people this like, point. People like Black Manta better than Aquaman. He's more of an interesting character than Aquaman is. And would r- rather see a, a Black true. Manta storyline. Aquaman storyline is garbage. Yeah, oh, okay. The, I'm sure the, prin- I'm sure, the Prince I'm sure of the Atlantis, are, right? Are, are, the Prince of Atlantis. 
craving with, a black with Eva. Uh, I don't think so. I'd watch the live action. Yeah, you trying to do, let me ask you a question. What do you let me ask you a question? What do you know about Aquaman? What do you know? What do you what do you know, know about Aquaman? What do you like about Aquaman? I don't like anything about I'm not Aquaman, saying, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying he, like, I'm talking about people who actually enjoy he Aquaman. He has no death. who enjoy Aquaman he said that no he's death. an interesting character. Like, and he for, cut off his hand the, for the his child. the last part of their okay, sentence. Okay, don't even. They cut off... That was the most interesting thing for him. They, well, he got, he got to do something. We got to make him lose an arm or something because this guy sucks. That's what happened. <laughs> coming from like... Aquaman a, is the least coming from where I used to work, character where I worked in, in comic, comic history. Working in a comic <laughs> shop and actually talking to people who buy comics, I could see people who like enjoy DC actually said uh, Aquaman was one of their favorite comics of recent years. So, and what did they say about? It? He's interesting. How is he? The storylines are interesting. Oh, he's, a prin- he's a prince. He's a prince of Atlantis. Look, man. Yeah, what, what you, else about? See, but you're, you're arguing <laughs> okay. against your point of view against me <laughs> coming from other comic book readers. Yes. You go. You go into your own like, like, battling the masses, like watering like, him it, down. It, it, it wasn't. It wasn't an Aquaman movie. It was a Justice League movie, and that's the whole. We're coming back to that and point. This movie the, did not do a good job of developing his characters. Like it didn't. He, it was. It was a copy and paste for everybody. Like they were all separate, and like let's let's because the script demanded it. Let's get them together some way in like you know under an hour or something like that. You know, that well, that's how it thing. was. So. We already been introduced to Wonder Woman and Batman, so they didn't spend mm-hmm. much time on that. And I think Batman probably got the most screen yeah, time than anybody else. Like Batman, then Wonder Woman was next. Then it was probably they, they I were think, leading the, Flash. the team. They were leading the team, but Cyborg actually got a pretty decent introduction, and no. pretty, you know, in the movie, you got to rush like, like that. That should have been like delved in, delved into more. Like it was rushed for the sake of trying to get him on the team. And like I said, it, it interested me, and then it was like, oh, okay, like. He has to find out of all this stuff, like, you know, you know, uh, Aquaman. Okay, I'm gonna tell you I'm Batman, like, you know, stuff like that. And like, oh, Cyborg, all of a sudden has this power to know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. And then Flash, I'm gonna throw my thing at you so you can know that I'm Batman. And it's like, this is all stuff that could have been explored in their own movies, or it could have been explored in much more like uh, expanded way. Instead, it was all rushed just for the sake of getting to the end of the movie, which was fighting Steppenwolf. That's it. It was just like all leading into that, and it it didn't feel good. It like. Like I said, you, so, in, in five years, we won't care this movie came out. Like, the Avengers just went through their 10-year anniversary and stuff like that. See, when, and like, and this is what out. I knew was happening. So the, you, the comparison between the Avengers No, I'm not. I'm not is that, the only reason I'm comparing it now, the only reason I'm comparing it now is because people will still watch and go and, like, remember Avengers because that was, like, a, a, high quali- a crowning, like, moment where, like, you got to see all these characters and stuff like that, and they, and they kind of build up to it. My problem with this movie is that, in, like I said, I'm thinking like in in like years from now, like you won't care about this movie. You won't care this movie came out. Like th- th- you can say what you want about it now and stuff like that. And the fact that this is a Justice League movie, this is supposed to be like a big time movie. Like I, I I would say, yeah, I'm not a Justice League fan, but I'm aware of the significance of the Justice League. And the fact that this movie will not be remembered only by maybe diehards. I mean, like I said, Kitty will probably remember it in five years. But I know for a fact you won't care about this movie in five years, E. And nobody else now, that's kind of like, and now, nobody else thing, will. Anybody else? When, when looking when at a movie, out, it would just be like, oh, okay, oh yeah, a Justice League movie did come out. Wow, I didn't, remember, I don't. <laughs> like people, are like, why are there another Justice League come out? I like, oh wait, I did understand. Come out in I understand what you're saying. If we I can remember that Daredevil comics, came out as a movie, I'm sure we'll remember it. It did a comic compared to the cartoon. It did live up to its name. Animated series. It did live up to its name. Yes, but as a movie, as solely as a movie, as going in to watch a movie itself. Justice League is a good movie. If it you is watch a, it as exactly a what I movie, said. It, no, it is a movie. It is a movie that exists. Like I said, it's not. It's a movie, it's that, a exists. movie that exists. It's a movie that exists. I'll give you that. It is a movie, and it's not. It's not the worst superhero movie. It's not even the worst like DC EU movie that they have. I would rather watch Justice League than Suicide Squad or uh, even Batman vs Superman. I would watch Justice League over those because it is a movie. Those movies were really, really bad. This movie is not on that level. But I'm not going to say it's a good movie either. It's just a movie that I spent two hours watching. And I will forget about it in a month or so, to be honest. That's the same thing that I said when I watched the movie at first was I I enjoyed the movie until Superman came in and then that ruined the whole movie for me. (laughs) (laughs) You don't like Superman. Was it it the mustache? mustache? It's the fact that like... (laughs) Oh my god, I didn't even get Superman, into that. I didn't even take that. Like, into... It ruins any like kind of tension into a movie. Like 
you had like the guy, the, the guy struggling to fight Stepman Wolf, and then like Superman comes in, and is like, "Well, battle's over." It's like it ruins any tension within the no, movie. I love that part. That's the part no, I love. That was that's good. It, it plays that well into good. Superman, like shows, what Superman character is. But I don't. Like, I just don't like Superman in that role. It's like as a movie, <laughs> that didn't like that didn't feel right in the movie scene. It's like, oh, it's like, and the battle's over. And that's I mean, it. It's like Superman. Yeah. Battles you army. expect yeah, that, it from Superman because so, that's so, who he is, but as a movie, that well, that's where your, it failed for me. Your your problem is I can see the, that. The, the the DC failing of making terrible, overpowered superheroes because that they have to do that, or the, it would have been a complaint that Superman wasn't powerful enough. Yeah, I think that was all right. Bring him in, bring in the, the cannon to end the battle because that's essentially what he is. That, they did this movie good. You know who was the most awkward in that scene too? I guess that, it was Batman and his dumb smile when he saw Superman. I was like, "Are you serious <laughs> here? Why is he smiling like a what? fucking twelve-year-old girl?" Batman ever smile? Who's just seen? Exactly, <laughs> my man had the <sighs> like face. Like he, I was like, "Oh my god, what is he doing?" Probably, here? He's probably thinking about them ribs that got hurt already throughout what this whole are they movie. Doing his here? mortality coming through. He's like, "Oh my god, why did he smile like a fucking <laughs> youngster? Looks like an idiot." <laughs> like, hey, People can be happy, all right? Movie. Jesus, oh get me out of this movie. All right. Listen, no, all in all, this the was, movie is. The if movie this is was, a good if movie. this was Josh Sweden Helm, like he, uh, you know what, man? Then he fucked up. Like this was a forgettable movie, really forgettable. If he really did it's... have any kind of like writing or uh, like directorial influence in this movie, he needs to like between this and Avengers two. Then maybe just like, all right, take a step away from heroes and. That's when that's what he did for Batgirl. He was like, I'm out. <laughs> you know what? I got no more with this fucking franchise. I'm done. I got nothing for you guys. It, it seems so that me and Zan Maybe this was just him it phoning seems me it and in. Zan each has I'll a, give a it. review of ease that we don't agree with. Zan's is this one I'll give it to Guardians you. of Galaxy 2. I'll give it to you this way. I'll give it to you this way, man. The the one thing that I do say it does not live up to the hype of the Justice League. You know, franchise itself. But as mm-hmm. a movie, I went into keep in mind, I went into this movie to tear it down because I was like, DC, terrible writing already, and now they're going to make a Justice League. It's going to be horrible. And when I got through the movie, I enjoyed the movie. I was entertained. I was watching the stuff on on the screen, and I was like, man, this is actually a good movie. You got to say it's a good movie. You can't just I say, think, oh, yeah, this is I trash. think you, no, I you were expecting so much I can shit acknowledge it that existed. anything good yeah. would made you happy. Anything, yeah. He was like, oh, wait, this is like, this was not terrible. So you gave it like, uh, you know, like extra points or extra credit or something like that. And that, that raised it up. You, gra- you graded it on the curve. This movie, you graded it on the curve. Yeah, if I was going to rate this movie, I get, I would give it like 5 out of 10, 50%. It was neither good nor bad. It is a movie that existed. And I, w- I, was, I would give it worse, except that like the stuff they did do was like, some of the stuff they did do was was executed pretty well, like I said. And like a lot of it had my interest, but... Overall, the movie was just forgettable, man. It's just an action movie. That's it. And you got you got to ha- hold this kind of stuff to a higher standard when you have see, and that's the, the, the thing. Materi- I, I, you I'm have going, the material like away. the Justice League, and I'm going away from that because even though yeah, they do have source material, they tend not to use them all in movies. But if the movie is still good, because if that was the fault. case, if that was if that was the case, I would have rated Star Wars a lot lower. Low, Star Wars: The Last Jedi would have gotten a would have not been a good movie if that's the case, if I'm comparing no, it to the lore there, that it's coming from. No, because you know there, there is no, I mean, there, there is no, like, like, you know, because like they had source, source material, material in they that They don't. Too. They created their own one. That all, they, like, that's officially been like, discredited. So they don't have that source material to go from. They can get inspiration from it, but George Lucas officially stated all that other source material that came out, all they those had, books, and, it's done. They're not canon anymore, so they can't go into that. It's not like they, they have, source it's material like they have 60 years of comic books movie. to go into, E. They, they have, have 60 years of comic books. Previous movie, so they're going to just copy another movie? How does that make sense? How's it going to co- they not, They can't copy any, another movie. They don't have 60 years of comic books like fucking DC had or Warner Brothers <laughs> had to dip into. They had much more source material than Star Wars has. Okay? And they're trying to stretch forward something new. You know? So like, it sounds to me that you're not saying the movie is bad. You're saying that the movie is not as good as it should have been. Yes. It should have been a coming much from where the movie. source material was. It should have been a much bigger block, but it should have been much stronger. Yes, and this will be uh, a very impact. forgettable movie. Like I said, this movie would not be remembered in years to come. They will, if there's a 10 year anniversary of the Justice League movie, I'll be fucking surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be my. I'm, I'm just saying, like, 
like how they're doing, um, like they're, they're doing the whole ten year thing you? for like Marvel, right? And like they're they're probably gonna release a big box set for it. I'd be fucking dumbfounded if they release any kind of like anniversary oh collection God. or any big deal for Justice League, the movie that came out. This movie See, will not be celebrated. It'll be forgotten. This is a t- this is a tough conversation to have, just because I, I hate DC to to begin with, but. I think you're giving this. I think you're kind of judging the movie unfairly just because of it not living up 100 percent to that comic book no. legend. But it is a two-hour movie. The fact that this stuff can be done is like, they, like DC source material. Like they've been utilized for animated series. Fucking Injustice Two utilizes the, the source material and these characters much better. Then, I'll agree with our opinion. Then too. what the, then what Warner Brothers did with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just doing this for the sake of just jumping on the bandwagon to if this movie would have been good, I would have owned up to him like, you know what? It was good. Like I said, I owned up to Wonder Woman being really good. I have no problem giving credit to where our credit's due. But this movie is not that. And like I said, it's not the worst movie in the DCEU. There's much more worse than that. And like I said, I would rather watch this movie than some of those other ones. But it's not the best one. Like, I'm not going to go back and think, like, man, I really want to go watch so Justice wait, League again. Like, right nope. now, would Justice League be number two, considering how bad the other movies were? Probably, <laughs> yeah. In, in the DCEU, oh Justice League God. is probably number two <laughs> in, the, in the movies that came out. Hmm. You know? I, I, I think you're, you're judging it oh, much harsher. Sure. No, because because, because I don't it's not. So. I don't think I so. I think so. You said it, man, because you said from the source material, they should have made something better. I think that's it. Is, you know, it did not live up to that to the legend of the Justice League from the comics, from the cartoons. Like you I said. think, I just that's as fairly as I judged Star you're Wars: The Last Jedi. Like points. I didn't, I didn't say Star, I didn't say Last Jedi was the best Star Wars movie ever, and I didn't say it was the worst Star Wars movie ever. I said it was a good enough movie, but there were some moments in it that they failed to do. I, I'm judging this just as much as I judged Star Wars: Last Jedi, and I love I love Star Wars much more than I love DC stuff. I'm not so <laughs> rating it on any, like, I'm not trying to give it, like, a, you know, a, a curve or anything like you probably are. I'm just rating it as it is. The movie yeah, that it is that was presented in front of me it's, and the fact that I've seen better material with these characters used it's leads no, me to believe that they got really lazy with this with this movie. That's it. It's no curve. It's no curve. The action was great. I mean, It wasn't great. Coming out, seeing that, uh, that Amazon flick with uh, that battle with the Amazons and uh, Stephen Wolf. Yeah. Was good. The action throughout this movie was good. No, the, I wouldn't say throughout character, this movie. No. The character interactions think, in this yeah. movie was good. What was your favorite fight scene? Like, I don't know. The flashback. That one was so cool where there was the gods and stuff. You mean the Lord of the Rings scene? Like, which one are you talking about? Like, that, that scene that they ripped off the oh Lord of the Rings God. and then they gave the rings to the elves and they gave the rings to... <laughs> oh, they gave the mother boxes to the, to the, to the world oh of humans. God. And come on, man. That's been around and for they, a long time and too. I love though. They, it's not like it's a just, new theory. Like they're just like, oh yeah, I love mother how, like the Amazons put to, their mother box inside this huge fucking vault. The uh, like the Atlanteans put it in the depths of the sea, and the humans are just like, all right, like put in this fucking three foot uh, hole in the ground. Get, this is such a lazy movie. It's such a lazy done movie. I can't believe you guys like are defending this movie so hard. It was so lazily done. They didn't care. They put it out to get money, and that's all they. they it was put out for. Uh, they, they, they weren't intended for it to be good. It. All movies put are put out to get money. This movie was so hard to put out to get money. This movie was solely put out, out to get money. Movies are meant to make no, no. Money. I, I get that. Yes, movies are put out to make money. I get that. But some movies are actually put out to send a message. Some movies are actually put out to like inspire people in some way. This movie did, did not aim to do either of those things. It was a movie solely put out to be a movie. That's it. This is it's on the par of level of like Transformers. We put it out there Whoa. and let's see how much we can get. <laughs> I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying it's as Whoa. bad as Transformers. But yeah. it, it was put out there with the mentality of a Transformers movie. It's like we know there's no depth to this movie, but we're gonna put out and see how much more we can get from it. And the fact that there's no sequel in the play, the fact that nobody else wants to advance with this movie, leads me to believe that's all this movie was put out for. Like they they're like, well, we have a movie, so like nobody else is coming back to do a sequel so we might as well just put it out and see what we can get from this money wise and don't tell me that's not what the case because if there was they would be planning a justice league 2 the fact that they canceled it means they don't care about this franchise anymore I that's how they treated the this movie the backlash of the critics is what did it and that made a lot of people yeah okay because that's not to get on a project because it's not a critics thing because man. it's not a critics thing they don't Batman care about it superman that everyone ripped apart then we had suicide squad which everyone ripped apart for good reason so that third movie coming in 
oh, as soon as they started throwing out them negative uh, reviews, you know, no. everyone jumped on on that train and just kind of no. pushed it down more. So now everyone's afraid to make something or if say, it was, oh, I'm going to make it was, a Justice if people League actually listen, If you think critics, if you think people actually listen to critics and stuff like that, you think more Transformers movies or Fast and Furious movies would stop coming out? No, they don't care. If, if it's making money or, and it's actually like a good thing, people would still go watch it. The thing is, nobody cares about these movies, you know? It's not that. It's not like, oh, we listen to critics. Oh, my God, we need to back away. Like, no, if it was something people had cared about or it was being well-received or it was making a lot of money, then they would still put out more. Look at those other franchises. Fast and Furious is going to be fucking probably racing in space now. <laughs> and care. And they're gonna, it's going to get bashed. Transformers movies get bashed, and they still come out, and they make money because it's not about a critics thing, man. They just don't care about it. The franchise. They're not putting in the, the work to make this franchise good. And it, and it shows. So you're movie. saying there's no passion. Man, Zad, there's no passion, passion in the movie. Zad, Zad has passion for all this movie right here, man. You really did not like... You really did not like Justice League. Huh? It's not... It's just... I, yeah. Cause like, he feels betrayed by your it's reviews. It's more about it. He... Yeah, it's more about <laughs> it that, that, that you got... You know, like I said, Kitty... Like, you know, vouching for it, I understand. She's gonna, she likes DC stuff, so I understood that. But when you vouch for it, I was like, I had to put a serious, I had to take a serious uh, eye to this movie now. <laughs> I had to take a serious eye to this movie. Because if I had just watched this movie, I'd be like, without, like, you know, your recommendation or your vouching for it, I would have been like, mm, okay. It's about, I'm like, I don't understand, like, what, what, what they're seeing then, because this movie was not good. <laughs> Like, well, there's certain things that you didn't find funny that I found funny, obviously. So we seem to have a difference of opinion. You gave this movie a real harsh rating on it. Like, all Flash's jokes you thought were, were, were trash. All of them. All of them were trash. They were <laughs> oh, terrible. Man. There was not one scene that he did that it made me laugh. Like, the part where, like, everybody disappears on Jim Gordon and he's like, oh, everybody's gone. Well, that was rude. in the trailers and that's what I said was the that's worst rude? part of, of the I was thing. like, oh, okay, you're not funny, yeah. kid. Like, please, like... I don't know what they were going for with him, but it wasn't well done, you know. And I know you were saying this because, like, I also watched Thor Ragnarok, and you were saying, like, how the comedy was much more forced than that one, and I watched that one. I was like, what is he talking about? There's not anything in that scene or in a movie that felt forced. <laughs> it felt much more forced in the Justice League movie than it did in Thor Ragnarok. I don't because know. Because you know why? They earned their comedy in that movie. Like, they didn't earn it in... Uh, Justice League. Thor Ragnarok had a serious event going on, and I could have taken, you know, Thor's hammer and replaced it with a mic and put him in front of a comedy scene because he was pushing out all these jokes all day long when it was like not needed. Like, like, hey man, Asgard's getting torn apart, not needed. Like, it was a whole bunch. Where so, was he joking yeah, when it was like Asgard no was joke getting torn apart? Part. The tone of Thor. Was way and probably probably a little better than the other movies, but much more different than what it needed to be in a movie. He was a lot more com comical throughout the entire yeah, movie. Because that that I I could toss up to actual character development. Now Loki, 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 Loki with Thor, like, you have him in the first few movies. He's like this this serious like warrior god, but then after Avengers, when he's hanging out with humans and Tony Stark, he gets that human mentality of being more like jokey and lighthearted. That's where in this movie he gets that thing. That that I could yeah, talk about. And in this movie development. it's from beginning to end. It's from beginning to end. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna go with the Joker scene, Loki. Yeah, not we're beginning do, we're to end. I don't know what no. it's non stop. Like it was in the beginning, like, I know now. that. Like there was a lot of comedy yeah. things and that I mean you can attribute that to the fact that it was a comedy writer, you know, and the comedy director that was like uh like handling all that stuff like that. But I can't. I don't see him like doing shtick up there. You, like he was saying some. You watch this like, movie. Watch that movie again, and you notice that did. Thor is more joking than Loki in the movie. He's he's much more cracking out more jokes, more like lighthearted like, throughout the whole movie. You make movie it seem like he's just Loki. like doing like bits and stand up. Like he's not. Like he's he reacts <laughs> to scenes. Like he reacts to situations in different ways. Little. I would say the, different ways, but the he's only not two scenes I can imagine where like he did a joke in a kind of serious situation was the very first scene in the movie Absolutely. where he's like spinning around the chain, and then the one scene where he yep. throws Loki, and like and that yeah. th those are the only two scenes where I could imagine you saying like he did a joke in a serious situation. Other than that, I can't see it. You. I still haven't oh, watched okay. that movie. Oh, oh yeah, he didn't spoil it. Don't, don't spoil it too much, then. Like, I was just about to say, I was just about fine. to say something yeah. to do with Thor's sitting I in the chair really... getting uh, zapped into 
you know, moving super fast or whatever and doing a scream. But I won't say that anything. wasn't that wasn't him doing funny. I mean, like I kind of, I kind of believe E though. I even though I haven't seen it because like I have seen that forced comedy out of a lot of the and, Marvel and, movies, and, and listen, especially sequels. Yeah, because of the Disney. And I'm not bashing. I'm not bashing the Thor movie. But Thor movie is a good movie. I'm just saying it, a couple of things was like it, they were pushing that lightheartedness probably to get away from the others, the other Thor movies that came out, especially the second one, which is trash, like all brooding or whatever. It's like nah, it, we're gonna go a full other direction. But I just think it was a little too much. It was stretched out too much in the jokes where they could have just focused. I on can say the that there was that definitely. Was going on. There was definitely an influence felt in this movie that was probably garnered from like uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Like they have that yes. feel of it. Yes. But the thing is yeah. that it was still well done. Like it was all funny. Like I actually chuckled and laughed at some of those scenes. Like whereas in in Justice League it, that didn't happen. Like there was no chuckle. There was no Wait, laugh. Hang on. There was I, no got smile. Another, I got another one for Justice League. Like you I said, except for the Superman, laugh. Scene, the Superman <laughs> scene. You, you did a laugh when uh, Batman was on the ground and and stated that. Something is definitely bleeding. You didn't no. laugh at that. No. Holy Why crap! Is that funny? Your, Why is your, that funny? Your heart is made of stone, my man. Why is that a funny thing? I don't, thing? I don't <laughs> remember that scene. <laughs> because it, because exactly. it goes, it goes back to the the Batman vs Superman when he asks, "Do you bleed?" Yeah, and, he, <laughs> and Batman yeah, and answers the question. Him, he's like, oh, "Do yes, you bleed?" Something's definitely. And then he says, "Bleeding." Yeah, something's definitely bleeding now. I'm like, "How is that a funny?" That's like you. That's like like. You know, comedy one oh one, that's this joke that's in like almost every action scene oh, or action movie. God. That's that's, that's not rough. anything new, dog. That's, that's something rough. we've seen before. That's You're a joke rough, we've Zan. seen before. Zan, and to your point, E, like it, it would it would be the equivalent <laughs> of like it would be the equivalent of an action star getting thrown and he's like, I'm definitely gonna feel that tomorrow. Like that's the same <laughs> thing. Like, it's in the morning. Yeah, that's... like it's the same <laughs> line. It's just he's like he's like yeah, point definitely e, something. No, who do you see more being someone who'd like actually tell a joke, Thor or Batman? Would you see? Imagine Batman telling a joke in the middle of a fight scene. No, it wasn't like it wasn't that he was telling a joke. He was just stating the no, pain. No, he, he, he was, was trying to crack a joke. Was funny. No, he wasn't yeah, he cracking was. a joke. He was talking about the pain he was in, and it was funny. Nope, was like, that's yep, that's something that's something that I feel is definitely bleeding. way more out of character for Batman to do than anything Thor did in the movie. Yeah. Listen, if you get if you get boxed up by super bad. It might it might knock you into a joking phase as well while you're crippled on the ground. So oh I understand it. That hey, was just I think maybe you guys that would be rough. Rough. No, you guys that would be sounds really like that sounds like Justice League. Honestly, That's that that, that sounds like a Josh Sweden line that he was like, you know what? Nobody cares. We'll just recycle this line that I use in another movie, probably or another <laughs> show, and I'll add it into Batman here. Copy paste. Put it in. Nobody cares. Where's my check? Oh All my right. god. I think, I think we've been going on for a while with this Justice League debate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's what it turned yeah. into. Uh, I guess it turned yeah. into it. <laughs> but damn, Zach, your passion. I'll leave, I'll leave my stuff there because, like, like, I your mean, passion, it? yeah. Other stuff that I did was just like, uh, I mean, I watched uh, Master. I finished Master of None and I watched Jessica Jones. So I won't get yeah. into that stuff until Kitty obviously watches it and stuff like that. Um, okay. So, and yeah, get on yeah. season two. Jessica Jones, Kitty. What yeah, I watched the whole season, Jessica Jones. So. And that was nice. You did a binge watch, from my understanding. I think oh, you yeah. went past me while I was watching season two. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. And I, I, I did a message. He was like, he was like, man, I'm on the, I'm on the last episode. I was like, hang on, I got two episodes to go. I said, like, hold the <laughs> fuck. Like you haven't even watched the last time. You haven't even watched season one. How the hell yes, did I you did. pass me? I saw, I saw season one when it came out. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, right, I saw right, it like so. last. Yeah, I saw last season. So I, I was okay. up to date. I was just waiting for season two to come out. Oh, I thought you was watching like mm-hmm. season one and two. No, no, that'd be a, that would be a lot two days. to watch. That's why I yeah. thought it was, it was like binge. I was like, no, oh, right. man. Oh, I, I didn't know you saw All right, E, so how about you? What do you have going right, on? All right, E, yeah. So, other than the fact of uh, regaling how good Justice <laughs> League was, <laughs> I, uh, saw, I saw a movie that I thought I would never, ever watch because I hate most of these franchises. Uh, and that is Fate of the Furious. Believe it or not, I found that. Why, why would you say, the watch Furious. that movie? It's it's a oh. Fast and Furious movie. It it came on on some kind of HBO special. And <laughs> I just happened. And to did you lose house. your remote? 
Well, I had some technical <laughs> difficulties with my internet device to watch Netflix, so I had to watch TV. Somebody hacked you before you to watch it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and I will, yeah, I will say that. The movie is a Fast and Furious movie. It does have more driving than a couple of the previous ones. So mm. I gave him points for that. Charlie Theron as a bad guy is a wonderful thing. She should play more bad guys. I, I like her uh, serious demeanor. A movie is it's a Fast and Furious movie. I still think the best Fast and Furious movie was the first movie, to be honest. I didn't like that one, so. Yeah. So I yeah, kind of I did. I, I like the first. One. That, that the second one, third, and whatever else was in between was trash. Fate yeah. of the Furious is a little bit better than the previous in betweens, but. It's still a uh, nonsense action, you know, popping wheelies, doing impossible flips and stuff like that. To me, I guess the best uh, driving movie I've seen was Mad Max, uh, Fury Fury Road. Oh yeah, yeah. Where it actually had, you know, things that would happen. Hey, if you do this sharp turn or you go over a bump here, your vehicle's gonna flip and you're gonna be done. So, like, you actually felt the. What's the word? Suspense while the driving was going on. It's like, man, yeah, you fuck up control here, you're done. So, my take on Fast and the Furious, eh, not that good of a movie. <laughs> the, the fate of the Furious. Yeah, well, as Zan said, in the, the Justice debate, League of in the debate, fantastic. Justice League rebate, you, they're probably going to make more <laughs> and keep making more. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're going to keep making more movies. <laughs> they already have like another three lined up, they said. So, oh my I think God. The Rock is getting a spin off. Oh, my God. Yep. The spinoff might be better. So I also seen, uh, I don't know if you guys seen it because it's fairly new, but uh, I don't know if you watched Castlevania on Netflix. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. It's a very, it. <laughs> very, <laughs> very small, that, yeah. you know, very short amount of episodes. Well, there's season two coming out, so I'm actually excited for that because I actually oh, like yeah. the, uh, the first Yeah, the first season was really good. I still got to watch that. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. I haven't yet. Like, I know you guys talked about it a while ago, and then, like, I kind of forgot about it, but now, yeah, I gotta get on that one. You're gonna probably bash it. I'm sure it's it's pretty good. I'm sure they actually, you know, care about their character and stuff. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, the last bit I have is, uh, once again, my uh, Star Trek uh, Force God. Oh my introduction. God. Get ready God. for another hour, guys. Yep. You thought you were almost so, done, but it's so, me, so Star to, Trek. To educate the rest of the world, the, the bad guy. If there's a cut here and goes to the end, we know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> there's, the bad guy, there's a bad guy in Star Trek that's qu- pretty interesting to me. It's called the Borg. Their mm-hmm. classic line is We are the Borg. Lower yeah. your shields and surrender your ships. We I've will heard about add your guys, biological yeah. and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to serve us. Resistance is futile. This is a line. Sounds this like is a, a line. Paragraph. The, like this is a line from the Borg. That's how okay. they introduce themselves. If you run into them, this is what they tell you. Jesus. Yes. So they're a race that. Why not just run away while they're giving off that fucking monologue? <laughs> oh, their, their, their technology is super advanced so what they do is essentially go throughout the galaxy and absorb uh, bio and technological stuff to their own so they're pretty much looking for perfection and they keep adding on so if they go like to your galaxy or your, your area they'll probably assimilate everybody learn all your culture gain off of your technology add it to their own and become more and more dangerous as time goes on so it's just a mm. bad guy a quib in there they pretty much go up against everything that the that starfleet is you know to for individuality and sharing culture and they're the opposite they're like no we're going to absorb culture there's going to be no individuality all our minds are going to be linked as one and we're going to continue to pursue perfection so just a just a little tidbit there that's all i got hmm. star trek is interesting people so I guess, I guess I we'll wait for next time for uh, <laughs> another update on Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek Watch over here, Minister. <laughs> Bringing you guys the, the weekly or, uh, yeah, 
updates on Star Trek Universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay, anybody has anything else then before we uh, sign off? No, nah, I think we had a pretty good yeah. conversation. Justice oh, yeah. League's a good movie, y'all. Don't no, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's a movie that exists. That's it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but okay. Then uh, we will end it for uh, this week. <laughs> Despite all the, the suffering we had to get through to get this one out. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we made it through. We charged on Aww. through and we got it done. So uh, yeah, this has been Bit W Zan, joined by Secret Kitty, the American Gigolo, Mazentius, <laughs> and Minister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the former. Critics of movies. <laughs> Not saying goodbye forever, just saying goodbye for now. Mm-hmm.